Hey yo everyone, welcome to the Sunny Go One Piece podcast. On this episode, we're going to be talking about anime episodes 83 through 85, which by the way, I believe I misspoke on the last episode, uh, the episode number, so my apologies there. But this week's episode will be covering manga chapters 138 through 142. And we finally learn what awaits us at the top of the mountain in that castle and learn about a new potential crew member in the form of a cute and awkward but highly skilled rain dear now one other thing to note about these episodes for all you dragon ball fans this marks the reunion of two legends in the anime voice actor sphere it's the reunion of masako nozawa and mayumi tanaka the voices of goku and krillin now these days it doesn't seem like a big deal with dragon ball super and everything but at the time dragon ball gt had ended seven years prior and we all thought dragon ball was done for good so it was a welcome surprise to see their voices back together or i guess here their voices back together. So the synopsis of these episodes, after narrowly escaping Wapo, Luffy manages to climb up the perilous drum rocky to barely make it to the castle and finally get the treatment they need from Dr. Kureha and Chopper. Recognizing the need for a doctor on board their ship, Luffy and Nami both want to recruit Chopper, but Dr. Kureha begins to explain Chopper's backstory and why that is a difficult thing for him. So there are some interesting sequencing of events differences so the drum castle story and the big horn story alternate rather letting one whole sequence play out so for example with the big horn with zoro taking the coat from wapo's men and digging up dalton it cuts back and forth between what happens in the castle and what happens back at the base of the mountain in the town. And specifically, it actually cuts away right as Zoro takes the coat, but then it already cuts back to him having beaten up Wapo's men. So the anime adds this sort of action scene in between to fill that gap. And not to spoil too much, but Chopper's flashback starts much earlier in the anime, as there is a big story beat that's saved for later, about midway through the flashback, and also towards the end of the flashback. So it's cut in a very odd way but I guess the manga was a little bit more odd and in the way it's structured as well. Now within the flashback there are actually a couple differences as well. The big one being the introduction scene of Dr. Hero Look where he treats that one guy with the frog um, medicine whatever that was. In the manga it's way more intense as he actually shoots the the mother or the wife with the uh, tranquilizer gun and then it kind of traumatizes the little girl and then he injects the man with the that frog stuff the frog medicine and instead of turning into a frog he actually just like passes out and starts like foaming at the mouth so it's like this very intense scene in the manga and they sort of uh, dumb it down a little bit in the anime presumably because of how disturbing it can be and then the other change is that when Hiroluk strips down in the snow for Chopper he's he's um his obviously his uh, private parts are obscured by the suitcase in the anime but in the manga it's actually one speck of snow that just happens to have covered his genitals and uh obviously they they changed this because in animation they couldn't just have one piece of snowflakes just suspended in midair in that spot for the entire scene so they moved his suitcase over so that that would obscure his uh private parts Now getting into my thoughts and review, Luffy, now with both Sanji and Nami incapacitated, has to fend off Wapo and his goons without being able to fight back for fear of further hurting them. However, in an awesome moment, just as Luffy has nowhere to go with Chess and Kuromarimo bearing down on him, two Lapan come out of nowhere to save him, and it turns out it's that kid Lapan and the mother that Luffy saved earlier from being buried in the snow. And presumably, I'm guessing the other adult Lapan is the father? Hopefully? I will say the long flashback of this moment from literally the last episode I feel was a little unnecessary and just there to pad the time out because, I mean, it was literally like 15 minutes ago we saw this moment of Luffy saving the Lapan, and then they retell it again. With the help of the Lapan, Luffy makes it to the base of the Drum Rockies and begins to climb it barehanded with Sanji in his mouth and Nami on his back. This is insane and just shows how freaking dedicated Luffy is to saving his Nakama. This whole sequence of him climbing the mountain also showcases just how driven Luffy can be when he's got one singular goal in mind. One musical note here, they begin to introduce some new music tracks in the series as they use the themes composed for the movie Clockwork Island. 
And this would be part of a long-standing trend where music specifically composed for the theatrical movies get repurposed for the series. The next scene is one of my favorites. Vivi trying to revive Usopp after surviving the avalanche is just comedy gold. Vivi repeatedly slapping Usopp awake as he says he can see a beautiful flower garden so that he doesn't pass out and die. <laughs> Is so funny. And also, this in Japanese culture, the flower garden is akin to seeing like the bright lights or the pearly gate as a person is on death's doorstep. However, the following scene is what makes this scene so funny. And <laughs> Usopp's severely inflamed face and not knowing what happened to Vivi as she innocently plays it off like the inflammation is due to the intense cold is just so funny because she's just she knows exactly what she did yet Usopp is completely confused as to what just happened and why his face is so blown up to ridiculous proportions and usually these types of gags just go away after a while but this continues on to the next scene as they also run into Zoro, who's been buried in the snow, who almost froze to death himself. And he also mentions that he almost saw the flower garden too after becoming lost in his training and also being whooped by Dr. Kreha. And one last time they milk Usopp's face for one more joke as Zoro can't recognize Usopp because of how messed up his face is. But as soon as he notes the nose, he realizes it's just Usopp and it's pretty funny. And... There's also, this has nothing to do with anything, but at the back of the manga, there are fan submitted drawings. And I remember there was one drawing where they parodied this scene where Zoro is looking at a, an inflamed head. But instead of seeing Usopp's nose, he sees Arlong's um, saw nose. And Zoro, <laughs> and Zoro he, he makes Zoro say, oh, Arlong, <laughs> as if that's the only way Zoro knows how to recognize people. And another little joke here that I really like was Bibi observing Usopp and Zoro's bickering comments about how... <laughs> Nami may be becoming sick due to mental fatigue from observing this absurd argument between the two about the cold. And I like that she's now comfortable enough to make fun of the crew, showing that she is really becoming a part of the crew and not just a guest. After a bit more walking, they happen upon Big Horn again, and the villagers' reaction to Zoro's shirtlessness is pretty funny. <laughs> He's just like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and we find that Wapo's men are not allowing the townsfolk to help Dalton. And Zoro seeing this intensely and aggressively asks Usopp, that the, are these guys in fact enemies? And once he gets that confirmation, he immediately attacks them. And it turns out this attack was because Zoro was desperate for their warm outerwear, but not out of a sense of altruism or heroism to help. <laughs> Even Usopp commenting, that's why you were asking. <laughs> the other soldiers see this and attack Zoro, but we get yet another cool Zoro moment where he takes their swords and proceeds to dispatch of them in an instant, with Vivi shocked at just how strong Zoro is. It's interesting that Vivi is still surprised at how strong Zoro is, given she's seen him take out Mr. Five and Miss Valentine twice already pretty easily. But I suppose this is just to emphasize that Vivi is still underestimating and learning the true strength and abilities of the Straw Hat members. I also love that we get more of the running gag where Usopp takes credit for directing his stronger crewmates to action. And also this this is the entire section that's added into the anime that I mentioned in the differences section where this was cut out and in place it goes back to up on top of the mountain. Speaking of which, returning to Luffy, the scene of him slipping and his fingers and toes grinding away on the rock is just, oh my god, ouch, like seriously, that is painful to watch. But he does manage to get to the top finally to discover a massive castle but immediately passes out from exhaustion and begins to slip off, but is saved by what looks like a creature that has the same hat as Kuriha's reindeer, Chopper. We see a montage of Kuriha and someone treating and diagnosing Nami with a disease called Kestia. Nami then wakes up to find a cute furry creature bringing some herbs to Nami, but is immediately freaked out and hides backwards. <laughs> And I, and I love that quirk of Chopper. With a bit of foreshadowing we got from seeing Dalton's transformations, we can deduce that Chopper must have some form of an animal devil fruit as well. And all these different forms are him, similar to how Dalton was changing during his fight. In the following episode, we are finally properly introduced to Chopper the reindeer. We've seen in previous episodes Chopper as a normal reindeer and as his big man-sized form, but we finally get to see him in his cutest form presumably the hybrid form. 
from. Also, Chopper is played by the famous Ikue Otani, who has actually already been in One Piece, as she has played young Sanji during his flashbacks on the Baratie. But she's obviously most famous for being the voice of Pikachu from Pokemon. And she is the perfect voice for Chopper, and I honestly can't imagine anyone playing the role better. Like, she has this obviously the cuteness down with her voice but she also brings a lot of like intensity too whenever chopper needs to be angry or very strong and it's it's actually pretty impressive how she can go between the two chopper is incredibly silly and funny just in this opening scene here as he can't seem to hide himself correctly from nami and sticks his body out while concealing only part of his head and then constantly freaks out presumably because he hasn't had much real interaction with other people also Useless fact about me and the line that Kureha uses, the happy guy. I actually love using that line so much that I use it to address my family's dogs and my baby nephew. It's pretty, it's pretty silly, but I don't know why that line just stuck with me ever since I heard it, and I really like saying it. Kureha then explains what exactly was ailing Nami, and it turns out it was a disease known as Kestia that existed over a hundred years ago, and she rhetorically asks if they were wandering around on an ancient island where their stomach's out, and Nami's reaction is priceless as she's just like, uh... As that's exactly what happened, and that big bite she experienced at the end of Little Garden was in fact what made her sick. And to be honest, when I first read through this, I never even caught that detail. It was only after I went back and checked did I ever even notice this. The next scene is one of my favorites, and one of the more underrated Luffy scenes I feel like. And it's the part where Chopper recalls when they found Luffy and how badly injured and sick all three were. As Kuriha and Chopper are preparing to move them inside for treatment, Luffy on the verge of death himself grabs Kuriha's arm in desperation and tells her that there is Nakama in an attempt to plead to her to save them. And she obviously reassures them that they will be okay. But it's just the way he says it and just how desperate he is even though he himself is just about to die and chopper is also visibly affected by this as well seeing someone so desperate to save their friends and something that i think really ingrained in him how unique luffy is however this epic scene is then immediately followed by a hysterical one <laughs> it's the scene of luffy and sanji waking up from their procedures all hungry after not having eaten for presumably an entire day luffy sees chopper and he starts mumbling meat and in a horror movie-esque scene, Chopper stumbles back into Sanji where he describes how best to prepare deer meat or venison and the way the animators use the dolly zoom effect on Chopper's terrified face is just perfect and so funny with Luffy's mouth just pouring out drool. Ah, oh, this scene's so funny. Then as they run around, I also love the little moment of Luffy trying to take a bite of Chopper's arm. And Chopper sticks his foot in Luffy's mouth to prevent him from biting down while still running at full speed. It's just this entire sequence is just classic. Nami asks Kureha what Chopper is and we get an explanation and we come to find that he's a normal quote unquote blue nosed reindeer that has in fact eaten a devil fruit as we all had previously guessed and he ate the hito hito no mi or the human human fruit and gained the abilities of a human as well as the fact that Kureha has also taught him all the medical knowledge she knows. Now just as an aside, hito is just person in Japanese so it is literally just Hito or human. So obviously the blue nose is a reference to Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer who experienced a similar story but I want to talk more about the Hito Hito no Mi and I remember my friends and I would joke around back in the day like what would happen if a human ate this fruit? Would he just become a person who can no longer swim? And <laughs> Oda actually has jokingly talked about this in an SBS saying nothing would happen aside from the person losing the ability to swim except maybe they would ascend to a higher form of enlightenment. <laughs> and I like that answer because it kind of makes sense. And that's pretty much what my friends and I also came up with too is that yeah, they would literally just be a useless person who can no longer swim now. Moving back to Big Horn, the hiking bear makes its return in another random tense scene. And I love these random jokes inserted in scenes like this. And that coupled with Zoro's just weirded out question, like, who is this guy? And it makes for some of these like really intense scenes also have some really fun levity as well. And it just makes them really silly and funny. I mean, normally you don't really want 
tension to be taken away, but I feel like One Piece does it so well that I actually want it to happen, if that makes any sense. The rest of the episode, we get to see just what kind of person Chopper is as he interacts with the rest of the crew. And because this is the first time in a while that we are introduced to a potential new crew member, it's pretty cool because not since Sanji all the way back in Baratie in episode 20, I believe, did we have a new character introduced. I know Nami joins officially, you know, a few episodes later in Arlong Park, but she had already been introduced way back in Orange Town. So Chopper is literally the first potential new crewmate that we've actually seen. I guess Vivi with Sanding. Chopper himself is incredibly funny due to his childish naivety and awkwardness due to the fact that yeah, he hasn't had much interaction with people aside from Kriha, but he's got a good heart and cares deeply about everything and everyone it seems like. I especially love his weird character quirks like being unable to hide his emotions and having this con confusing response of anger and bashfulness. Like that whole sequence of him getting complimented by Nami and then <laughs> and he's like and then he's just like yelling that he doesn't he doesn't want to be complimented it's pretty it's pretty funny and luckily that is a quirk that never goes away and it's clear the straw hats like him as nami asks him if he wants to join as well as later on luffy's desire to invite him too becomes very apparent however chopper declines the offer as he has a difficult time trusting people because of a deeply tragic past of rejection loss and isolation he's had to endure his entire life it's particularly heartbreaking how he responds to luffy and sanji calling him a monster but of course both of them being pretty much monsters themselves they mean it as a compliment and i love the tonal shift when it's revealed that luffy wants to make him a nakama and you just wish chopper had hung around just long enough to hear that part as well with the final episode of this set we dive into the beginning of chopper's backstory told in a flashback by dr kureha this has got to be one of the saddest flashbacks in one piece it's not quite as tragic as nami's but this one definitely made me cry a lot more nami's was more horrifying but chopper's is just sad and tragic we meet a quack doctor named Hiroluk, and he's a terrible doctor who can't seem to treat most illnesses and is one of the last two doctors on the island along with Kureha after Wapo instituted his Ishii 20 policy and drove out all the doctors. After seeing what choppers had to go through being brought to the brink of death by both reindeers and humans, watching Hiroluk save Chopper and them developing a relationship is one of the most heartwarming stories ever and which is one of the reasons why I love this flashback back but I also get really sad watching it. Hiroluk may not be a good doctor in terms of medical skills but he has the heart and soul of one. He's someone with the skills to understand someone's pain and connect with them on a human level which is why with that one act of stripping down naked in the blizzard to prove to Chopper he isn't a threat even if he was just beaten bloody is such a powerful scene. That's then followed by Chopper waking up in Hiroluk's home treated and bandaged with food and water ready for him when he wakes up and that moment when chopper bites down on the bread and just starts to cry with streams of tears running down his face instantly oda has made us fall in love with these characters and their relationship it always brings a tear to my eyes seeing just chopper's face because it conveys just how much pain chopper has endured and how overwhelmed he is with the emotions from being shown kindness and acceptance like this for the first time i think for most of at least on a smaller scale we can relate to being lonely or feeling like an outcast and how we wish that we could find someone that would accept us and show us kindness this way it's something i hope you all don't struggle with right now but it happens and we can all see this and see ourselves as chopper and hope that we can strive to be a hero look to someone else someday and that's why to me this moment is one of the more memorable epic moments of the series we also get to see how cute chopper is and see their father and son relationship grow over time as hero look gives him the name tony tony chopper the chopper part is clear but what may get lost in the translation is the tony tony part so in japanese the word for reindeer is tonakai and the tony tony part is derived from the tona or tonakai and it's kind of a, a weird play on that word we get to see as chopper become his assistant and go around town being chased around as they provide incompetent medical care but it's so sweet how even through the good and the bad times, Chopper is loving every minute of it. And we even get to see the sweet moment where he gets his iconic pink doctor's hat gifted to him by Hero Look. I always love the animation of him putting the hat on for the first time. And it shows how his antlers just pop out from the side with this sort of blank stare. And then it, and then he gets 
all bashful and, and blushes a little bit, and it's pretty cute. I, li- I love that scene. Hiroluk then explains to Chopper how the country's citizens and the king's souls are quote-unquote sick, and then he's trying to save his country. He tells Chopper a story about a master thief who had contracted a serious heart disease. However, after traveling around and seeking treatment from all sorts of doctors everywhere, he was unsuccessful in curing it until one day, frustrated while passing by a mountain, he happened upon an amazing sight of blooming sakura cherry blossom trees. And by some miracle, he was found to be cured. And after this experience, being emotionally moved to the point where it affected his physical health, he hopes to use this type of experience and medicine to heal everyone on the island. And he explains to Chopper that nothing is impossible and to mark that he puts a Jolly Roger's skull and crossbones up to signify this philosophy. This is a really interesting I wanted to talk about. Now, I'm not a medical expert, obviously, but doing some research, there does seem to be some truth to this that the power of positive thinking can keep one healthy in the first place, but also make it more difficult to become sick. But... Also, it can help in fighting illness as well. Now, I'm not suggesting that happy thoughts and prayers are going to heal you magically because nothing will replace solid science and medicine, but I think both in tandem can make for a better treatment. And I believe you should have both if you truly want to be a great doctor. And this also leads to an interesting dynamic and one of the themes of this arc between Hiroluk and Kriha as they both represent the opposite extremes of this dynamic. Hiroluk, a doctor with almost no medical skills but has the ability and passion to connect with the soul while Kriha is a genius level medical doctor but has the bedside manners of a bridge troll. And they show us that both can be helpful on individual scales but to truly heal on a grander scale you need to combine the two philosophies. Someone who has the kindness and heart of someone who cares on a human level as well as an expert level knowledge of science and medicine, which is obviously going to be realized in Chopper. He is going to be the product of both of them having learned from both. He possesses Hiroluk's heart and soul and Kureha's skills and knowledge. And I just think that's a really beautiful sort of culmination of this story. I know I'm jumping the gun here, but this is pretty obvious what's going to happen. Returning from that tangent, Hiroluk then teaches Chopper about pirates as a way to also teach him about perspective and reframing his problems by showing him that the world is such a huge place and his problems are nothing compared to all that's out there and one day he should go out to see the world. And it's once again funny to see how Chopper's concept of a pirate is vastly different and underwhelming in addition to perplexing when he sees Luffy just rummaging through the closet for apples. But this is what also kind of plants that seed of maybe he does want to be a pirate and go out to sea. However, these happy times can't last forever. And in a scene that rivals any animal separation scene a la White Fang or Harry and the Hendersons and etc. Hiroluk forces out Chopper as his injuries have now healed. And it's just heartbreaking to see Hiroluk forcing himself to say goodbye to Chopper. Although the voice acting here by Hiroluk's voice actor here is not quite as convincing. It doesn't really ruin the moment for me though. But I just wanted to point that out. However, we learn that there was a reason Hiroluk forced Chopper out, as we learn here that Hiroluk was in fact that thief that he was talking about with the heart disease, and his disease either never went away or was just uh, delayed or it came back. I don't, it never really made clear what actually was the real story, but he is sick now and Kureha informs him that he has about 10 days left to live. And he drives out Chopper presumably to save him from experiencing his own death. With 10 days left, Hiru commits to finishing his research to save the country. And Chopper, having overheard this, is obviously planning something too. Because he doesn't want to see his mentor, friend, and father figure just die. But unfortunately, we won't get to see that until the next episode. But yeah, whew. If you thought this is sad so far, you haven't seen anything yet. If you weren't tearing up by now, make sure to bring tissues for the next episode because oh my god, it is a doozy. It sucks the episodes don't line up so that I can talk about the entire flashback in one podcast, but that just means I get to save it for the next episode. And I honestly can't wait to talk about this next episode and also towards the end of Drum with the conclusion. Yeah, these are some of my favorite moments 
and most memorable ones that have impacted me on a more personal level too. There's one line in the next episode that I particularly want to talk about. But anyways, if you enjoyed this, send me a like or a comment. And if you want to join me on this journey of rewatching One Piece, consider subscribing, please. Also, check out my Instagram and Twitter account at SunnyGoPodcast if you want to updates of when i post new episodes or see some pictures of my manga collection check that out as well and as always i wanted to thank you for taking the time to listen to my podcast and no spoiler section today i think i'll save most of these spoiler sections for after the drum arc is over but yeah i'll see you next time bye